ladies and gentlemen, we are here today on our late sewing seminar in Latvia where we present this uh, small project called Rapeseed Knowledge Center. My guest from Sweden, Alvin Gunnarsson, is still speaking to the audience, but I already would like to invite you for another small podcast with my guests, Alvin Gunnarsson, Oscars, Elvis and Antonina, for an, another small exchange about this uh, direct feedback from this uh, seminar from the audience and uh, about these uh, latest questions of late sowing rapeseed. As we predicted, farmers are interested in this topic. All seed, they, all, all seed rape is a cash crop here. So, and that's why it's important for them to get extra knowledge, extra dat dat data for them to implement in their own farming. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a success. We should definitely continue and I hope we can do that. Of course, of course, that's a good point. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have here also a uh, further international guest, Albin Gunnarsson from Sweden. Albin, uh, I have to say that I'm really jealous on you. You got so many questions here. Um, I, it was really interesting to, to follow this uh, discussion. Uh, what is your impression here from this uh, seminar in Latvia? I think it's a very interesting uh, seminar and interesting discussions. Uh, for me as a Swede, it's, it's, uh, I'm very happy to take part of that because we have the same problems and we have the Swedish island of Gotland in between where we also have growers and uh, I think it's not so far away and we can learn uh, a lot of things from each other. Perfect, yeah, that's true. It's absolutely true. To, to bring people together is definitely, that should be the platform and, and uh, yeah, to, to benefit from each other and to solve uh, these questions. Antonina, um, what is your feeling of this uh, discussion here today? Oh, jeez. <laughs> it was so uh, perfectly chosen topics in once, which have some, I don't know how to call it, some um, relations between topics. And they, you know, you listen to one topic and then another one, and you could, could use data from both topics. That's not, you know, the separate. Uh, discussions that's you know that's like continuous story just from different different parts and from di different shoes from Fermat shoes from Constantine shoes uh, from international shoes in 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 in, in general so uh, as you mentioned it, uh, I, s I also saw how farmers were happy about everything I think that some of them will maybe hear the first time such things um, yeah so that's that's good platform and I'm very happy about the seminar too Great, great to hear. Um, Oscars, um, I think uh, for this uh, uh, yeah, uh, project, late sewing project, uh, yeah, somehow your presentation was uh, the, the main important point in the middle of this uh, seminar. You, you present your figures, which you collect outside uh, um, in the field in autumn time. Uh, we, we have this uh, normal sowing, late sowing, there was somehow nine days difference, 16 of August, 25 of August. So we have now yeah, two kilograms biomass here, one kilogram biomass for the late sowing. Um, what is now your recommendation based on these figures to Elvis for the spring fertilization? What would you do now with this status quo outside in the field? Yes, I already said uh, Elvis, I have to do some small, uh, small homework. I have to use uh, uh, Albin's presented uh, calculation website or, uh, or to, 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 to calculate how many nitrogen it's already uptaken uh, in autumn. I didn't di uh, do it yet, but I, I will do it, uh, I hope next uh, couple of weeks because uh, spring is coming uh, also i mentioned in uh, my presentation that we don't have previous uh, previous experience previous research in such area so it's something new actually for us to calculate Elvis, um, okay now we had a huge discussion for for this topic but uh, what would be your strategy before with this field now what would what is your standard fertilization strategy with rapeseed? Uh, if it was uh, a normal field without trials, 
I definitely would have uh, put extra nitrogen in autumn for the late sowing uh, mm -hmm. trial. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's uh, another thing that Malte also said, it, it's a must in, in such conditions. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, normally, uh, previous years I didn't work with this Yara sensor, so I would uh, use constant uh, fertilizer application. How much? In, uh, it depends, but uh, previous years uh, when the nitrogen was 200 euros per ton, we used around 200 in, uh, in some, in yearly sum. Mm. Um, Albin, um, the point was uh, um, late sowing 25 of August. Uh, I think uh, um, Elvis, you used somehow 20 kilograms uh, nitrogen in total in autumn time. I think somehow I calculate a little bit. Um, could you imagine with a higher uh, nitrogen fertilization that we could even late uh, so later? Uh, <clears throat> not really. You cannot force the, the plant to, to take up more nitrogen, but there is a demand for, for nitrogen. Uh, the whole uh, autumn in the plant, the uh, oilseed rape crop doesn't uh, leak anything in autumn. It takes everything it, it can get as long as there, as there is any, any to get. Um, and we are seeing that uh, if you plant very late, there's no time to maybe take up those 60 kilos that we are allowed to apply in, in Sweden. Uh, so then you should might put on a little bit less. But for normal planting, uh, with uh, a normal field conditions, uh, we, we know that every kilo of nitrogen up t uptake is worth 1.7 kilos in spring, so it's a good investment to, to fertilize a bit more in autumn. And uh, if I understand that well, you uh, recommend then the nitrogen together with the sowing? Yes. Um, is it then underground fertilization or you put it on top of the soil? No, it's, we get much better efficiency if we put it uh, just beside the seed, especially when you use uh, like uh, uh, a wider row space, uh, like strip drill, maybe 25 centimeters or whatever. When we, when we see in our, our uh, trials that the optimal uh, N application rate is 71 kilos, if we put nitrogen in between the rows, it, the plant cannot take it up. So it's, it's better to put it uh, at the same time when you seed just beside the seed. Interesting, that's very interesting. Um, Oscars, um, one point, um, you mentioned uh, um, that with this 25 of, of August, we were very late and uh, it was interesting. You said that uh, for such a date uh, uh, in, in, four, uh, in four years, you lost one, one sowing somehow, if I understand yeah, it well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, our previous research is in Latvia and in this region especially show that uh, when you do sowing in the, for example, very, very late, it's for, for the first of December, the one, uh, uh, three or four years are, uh, didn't survive. But when you do it uh, in 25, then uh, from four year, one is missing yeah. and three somehow you can get some seals. Um, you mentioned also then the point of this kind of, um, yeah, uh, this um, uh, side effects from the, from the herbicide. So there's, uh, um, yeah, that uh, somehow a bigger pressure on, on these young rapeseed plants. Um, what about uh, clear field for late sowing? Is that then an option? Can't answer because we don't uh, didn't we don't try didn't try it, but still I, I think the clear field also makes some stress uh, mm -hmm. as, as herbicide, mm -hmm. so maybe there is I, I can't say there is difference uh, between clear, uh, clear field or the normal technique. Uh, Elvis, you use Belka for this uh, herbicide. Uh, I think uh, it is somehow. Uh, something similar with this clear field, uh, so uh, also especially for this uh, point of when you have to apply, so you're a little bit more flexible and everything. Um, but anyhow, was 
Up to now, was Clearfield a topic for you? Or is Clearfield anyhow here a topic? Uh, when the previously mentioned herbicide came in the market, uh, I don't, don't see any more a place for Clearfield. Uh, we can manage to do uh, all applications in, in autumn time with this technology. Uh, looking at the previous years, I would say uh, the old technology with uh, this uh, soil herbicide was, uh, I would say it, it, it would have worked even better for us for the last three years. Uh, the time, uh, this, the window for the spraying is, is more free than in, uh, in September because then there comes drought. Uh, cold weather in September or, or so hot and uh, the plants don't grow so much. It's, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, every year we have to adapt to this situation that is happening now and uh, there is no right answer for, for anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Alvin, um, Oscar uh, present his uh, data from the autumn time uh, and he also put uh, uh, this uh, highlight uh, uh, for this uh, seeding rate. We had then also uh, next to 45, 60 seeds per square meter as an uh, alternative for late sowing. Um, do you have experience for a higher uh, sowing rate and, and late sowing? Yeah, um, it's experiences from, from a long time back. And we have had uh, very clear advice, never ever plant more than 50 plants per meter square because they uh, start to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to compete with each other and to push up the growing point and then we got uh, a winter kill. It's, uh, it's different varieties today. Uh, they grow different. Uh, there might be uh, reasons to, to change that advice to, to plant with a higher density by late planting. And I also know that uh, the Finns that are uh, doing trials with uh, winter oil seed rape, uh, they don't see, don't, don't get similar results at all when it's uh, about uh, seeding rate compared to Sweden. They get better yields if they plant with the higher seed density and they up to 70 or even more plants per, per meter square. And we don't know why it's like that. It could be day length, uh, it's, it could be climate, but um, it doesn't look the same in Finland as in, in Sweden, and I'm a little bit scared of going over 50, but under special circumstances, new varieties, maybe. Um, Oscar, do you expect with these uh, 60 seeds per square meter a little bit more stress uh, for the spring crop management? So maybe lodging, or that we have to uh, think about some extra growth regulation? because of this extra yeah, plants? I think the main reason why we increase uh, the, the density in autumn because we are expecting that there will be some losses uh, in winter. So actually I can't answer it because we have to look in spring, go uh, on the field and look how it is. Uh, because uh, if, if there is some lo losses, so maybe this, uh, there will be no chance for a co competition between plants and so on. Uh, 60 plants, uh, I, I, we didn't count how many plants we, we left before winter there. That's actually a little bit of a mistake for us, but uh, I think when it could be 30, 35, 40, there will be no problem. Antonina, you have uh, the last uh, words. Um, um, how it will go further. I think it's clear that we will continue this project. Um, I think we should do some uh, spring field day also here on that project. Yeah, of course you must because, uh, you know, we right now we're discussing about uh, about results in general which we receive from uh, autumn, from autumn scorings and uh, as right now is fall, spring, <laughs> but uh, actually spring is not, not, not here, it's not coming. So of course you must check situation in field again, make assessments, uh, yeah, uh, look at results and then discuss again. So that's, that's just beginning. So let's continue. This exactly. Way. Perfect. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Yeah, Elvis, Oscars, Alvin, Antonina, thank you very much.